It's late June here in Idaho and we're right in the middle of our drip irrigation season on our onions. Today we're in a uh, sweet onion field here where we're trying out a new bed configuration and drip tape layout. This is five lines of onions with two drip tapes per bed. We did this for the first time last year and really liked the results. This has allowed us to keep the top of the bed drier, minimizing evaporation as well as weed germination and allowed us to keep those onions right at the perfect moisture that they like to grow. So let's take a closer look at how this onion bed is laid out. All of our beds are on 40 inch spacing, meaning from the middle of one bed to the middle of the other bed is 40 inches. Traditionally, we do four lines of onions with one drip tape down the middle. But on this new bed configuration, we've got two drip tapes buried deeper in the ground and five lines of onions uniformly spaced across the top of the bed. This allows for the moisture to not reach the top of the bed, keeping that top of the bed dry for disease pressure, along with minimizing evaporation loss to the sky. This tape is four to six inches deep, and what this has allowed us to do is to put fertility deep down into the root zone. As you can see, these onion roots growing down to the tape. That's really allowed us to cut fertility as well as minimize water. The top of the bed here remains dry while the root zone stays and has good moisture. This has just come off of irrigation, and, and, and that's been really important for both weed control and disease pressure of keeping that bed top dry, where we're able to irrigate, the top of the ground stays dry, minimizing disease and evaporation loss, but while the onion roots get what they need where they need it. So now that you've seen our new five line uh, double tape onion bed, let's go look at a traditional onion bed and look at some of the differences. Here we are in the middle of a red onion field that has our traditional bed configuration of four lines of onions and one line of tape. This was the uh, bed configuration we adopted when we first did drip irrigation in the early 90s. And this has two lines of onions on either side of the drip tape. And in this case, as opposed to our, our five line bed configuration that we're working with, the tape is much shallower. So you'll see a wetting pattern on top of the bed which is not bad. We still use a, a lot less water than traditional flood irrigation by using drip, but you can see the wetting, the wetting front and the moisture on the top of the bed, which can, in, in excess amounts, cause disease pressure and can cause weeds to germinate on the top of the bed. Drip irrigation has really allowed us to minimize inputs in, in two very dramatic ways. The first and the more obvious one is, is water reduction compared to traditional flood irrigation where the water would flow down the, the furrows of onions. Drip has allowed us to water the right amount of moisture each day to keep the soil exactly where it needs to be for the onions to grow, so not too wet and not too dry. The other thing that's not as intuitive is what drip irrigation has allowed us to do in terms of fertility inputs. One major nutrient need of onions is nitrogen. Traditionally, in a flood irrigation scenario, you would have some fall or spring applied dry fertilizer and then some side dressing operations done throughout the growing season where a tractor would come through and inject fertility in, in the ground once to twice per season. In that model, when you're flood irrigating, a lot of your nitrogen is going to go both down and not be directed right into the root zone of the onions. So with drip irrigation, we've been able to cut our nitrogen input needs in about half compared to a traditional flood irrigated system. That allows us to put the nitrogen through the water in the drip tape and put it right into the root zone of the onions. So we can spoon feed these roots throughout the growing season as opposed to only applying the nitrogen, you know, two to three times in the growing season. That allows us to also get better bulb quality because we're giving that onion just the right amount of nitrogen that it needs, not too much and not too little throughout its, its life. So when we go through and look at their irrigation methods and our production methods, we say, what, is, what are we really achieving here with drip? Well, one thing that we found that we get with drip is a really uniform and consistent crop from the top of the field to the bottom of the field, from left to right in the bed, and that allows us to produce a more uniform bulb and really tailor that to what our, our customers need. The other thing that we get from an agronomic standpoint is really the ability to not stress that onion throughout its life. These onions you can see, we've got two bulbs here, you know, really very consistent bulb size from one to another, very healthy roots, nice and plump. Um, and really that comes from not water stressing them throughout their life and really giving them the right amount of, of nutrients throughout their life. 
Here we're on one of our farms that we've recently converted from flood irrigation to both pivot and drip. This was a project we did with both state and local grant money that's allowed us to eliminate flood irrigation on this acreage and then also use some ag runoff water to irrigate, minimizing soil erosion both by converting to pivot and drip irrigation and also reclaiming some ag runoff water, treating it in a pond here and reapplying it to our farm. This is the Conway drain here, which collects both natural water and some ag runoff water from the area. Pump this water, drop the silt in a pond here, treat it in our filter stations, and then reapply it to the farm that we have here behind us that this year is in peppers and onions. So this is the latest in our efforts to minimize soil erosion and move away from flood irrigation. This is really kind of the second phase on this farm. We started in the late 90s when we were still predominantly flood irrigating of putting in collection ponds to collect our our runoff on farm, drop sediment, and then we're able to reapply that sediment to the fields. Last year we put in this project, which this farm had sediment collection basins, but last year we were able to convert to pivot and drip irrigation, as well as this settling pond to reuse some ag runoff water from adjoining land. This has allowed us to virtually eliminate sediment runoff from this farm, but we're both reusing ag runoff water here and then eliminating runoff both in our onions uh, under drip and then in our rotation crops like wheat, corn, and alfalfa with pivot irrigation project that's, that's been put in on this farm as well. So we just came from a field and we saw a couple different layouts of drip in the field and how that waters the onions and where it's located on the bed. But to get all that done, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. As with any pressurized irrigation system, we're gonna have pumps, but different than say sprinklers, in particular, drip irrigation water has to be very, very clean. So in our case, we use sand media filters to filter out any sediment or sand that would be in the water after the pumps. We use stainless sand media filters to clean the water up. And that allows it to go through the very, very tiny holes in that drip system and not plug it. These filters are automatically cleaning through our controller and will periodically, based on the pressure differential from the top and the bottom, flush that sediment back out. That allows us to keep clearing and consistent water flowing through our tape. So in order to control our drip systems, there's a number of control components that we use. We have wireless drip irrigation controllers that help us to turn our valves on and off on a set program so we don't have to have people going out to turn the valves on when we need to change the set. And then secondly, on our electric systems, we use variable frequency drives. And this allows us to use just the right amount of pressure and water for when we need it. On these filter systems, as the water is flowing through them, sediment and silt will build up in the sand media filters. Once that reaches a certain point, we've got to clean those filters, and those filters will go into back flush. When that happens, the demand of water increases. In a standard pump system, that pump would pump a set amount of water using a set amount of electricity all the time. But by using these drives, we're able to, based on our demand on water from larger zones to bigger zones, or when our system goes into back flush or is not, that pump is able to throttle up and down and use just the right amount of energy for that particular situation. So after seeing these different techniques and systems that we use to irrigate our onions, you may be asking yourself, why are we doing this? Well, irrigating in a desert, obviously less water use is very important and becoming increasingly so. But really at the end of the day, it allows us to deliver a quality product to our customers more efficiently using less land, less water, and less fertilizer. Thanks again for watching.